means is that you do not have to get by yourself. The Most High God is about to lift you out. He's about to turn the medical report. He's about to free you. He's about to open new doors, bringing new opportunities, new relationships. The pit is not your destination. Get ready to rise. To get the pit, dial star 811 star 397 hash. Star 811 star 397 hash. After the dust settled on rigorous campaigns, Kenyans are waiting for elected leaders to deliver on their pledges. To have clean, accessible drinking water across the county. The hustle of everyday Kenyans is encouraged and rewarded. Operationalizing Terogoya Level 5 Hospital. A functioning school feeding program. But how have the leaders performed so far? The percentage of days in the 2021 were more than those ones in the 2022. We will not politicize security because if we do so, we endanger the country. Every week, we bring you an honest assessment of the national and county governments. One of the best ways of accelerating national development is through collaboration with county governments. The Scorecard. Every Tuesday at 10 p.m. on KBC Channel 1. I was part of the team in Ilitumu could take out Rohan. Move in! In for five years, we can study the man. All I ask is you let me write my wrongs and give me an opportunity to bring Rohan down for good. Senior Sergeant Farah, a.k.a. Stingray. Opro Ibrahim, a.k.a. Mongoose. Opro Katana, a.k.a. Panther. DC Kibet, a.k.a. University. One, two, three. Woo! One, two, three. Woo! We do this for honor. Yeah. Our loved ones, our family, and our country. Woo! One, two, three. Woo! Familia nyingi zimeathirika na hata mara nyingine kupoteza wapendwa wao kutokana na aina za majiko zinazotumia kuni nyingi na kutoa mushi nyingi. Lakini sasa kuna suluhisho kupitia kwa super jiko. Majiko ya kisasa yanayotumia kuni kidogo na kutoa mushi kidogo. Hivyo utunza familia yako kutokana na magonjwa yanayoletwa na mushi. Kwa kutumia kuni kidogo pia tuna save mazingira yetu. Siri ni kuwa Majiko haya ya kisasa yametengenezwa kwa leanono ya udongo ili kuzuia kupoteza joto, uhifadhi joto jingi na hivyo upika kwa haraka. Kuna aina nyingi ya majiko haya ya kisasa. Waweza kujengewa jikoni mwako au waweza kununua. Usibahatishe. Super Jiko. Upishi smart na salama. Ujumbe huu umeletwa kwenu na Wizara ya Kawi na washirika wenza. watching us right here in Nairobi, Kenya and around the world, including the continent of Africa. You are in time for KBC Channel One Prime Edition coming to you live right here at Broadcasting House along Harithuku Road. Good evening from wherever you're watching us once again. My name is Tom Boyer and this is our live broadcast tonight and it begins right now.
Wall on banditry. GOK reviews the vacate order issued in some parts of the North Rift region. Off the hook. DPP drops charges against former Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Okengo Matiangi. Was there foul play? IPOR launches probe into the killing of two suspects. Plus, meters in the streets. Azimil piles pressure on government in its quest for reforms. Susan Thuko is in charge of our sign language docket, our socials at KBC Channel 1, my Twitter handle at Tomboya24. This live broadcast begins with our top story. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Nudin Haji, has dropped charges against former Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Okengo Matiangi. According to Haji, the investigating officers provided insufficient evidence to warrant the prosecution of the then powerful cabinet secretary. Sarafina Robi opens our coverage tonight with that latest report. It's a sigh of relief for former Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi and his lawyer Dan Stinomari after the Director of Public Prosecutions directed the Directorate of Criminal Investigations to close an inquiry file against the two with no further police action. The inquiry was premised on a alleged raid on the 9th of February this year at Matiangi's place. The former CS was to be charged with conspiracy to commit a felony and publication of false information. According to a press statement signed by the Acting Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions and Chief of Staff Lillian Obo, the Director of Public Prosecutions, Anurdin Haji, says that upon review, the evidence provided was not sufficient to sustain charges against Matiangi and his lawyer. Matiangi had appeared before the DCI on the 7th of March for interrogation. Matiangi has served in President Uhuru's regime as the ICT CS, Education CS and Interior Cabinet Secretary. Serafina Robi for Prime Edition. Now the Independent Police Policing Oversight Authority has launched investigations into the killing of two armed robbers during a shootout with police officers in Moranga on Sunday. In a statement Monday, IPOA chairperson Anne Macquarie said that initial investigations have revealed that police officers were indeed involved in the killing. Ruth Wamboy with that report. Spot over the death of two suspected robbers who were gunned down inside Kenyona Forest in Moranga County on Sunday. The Directorate of Criminal Investigation reported on its social media handles that the two had engaged police in a shootout before they were overpowered by the men and women in uniform. But an image depicting the arrest of the two suspects will surface online, raising questions about the initial narrative issued by the police. In a statement, I post said the authority had established police action was an ingredient that resulted in the loss of lives. I poor chairperson Anne Macquarie said upon the conclusion of the investigations, the authority shall take appropriate action, including recommending to the DPP the prosecution of any person found culpable. According to the DCI, the two men were part of a gang that allegedly robbed the United Sako Manunga branch in Kigumo town on Saturday, March 11, 2023. Ruth Wamboy for Prime Edition. Now, government has reviewed the vacate notice issued Sunday, excluding parts of Turkana County. Residents of Kapel Bok, Nakwamoru, Lobakat, Lokoron, the Tarquil Escarpment, and Ombolion areas have been told to stay put and to continue with their daily activities. Interior Cabinet Secretary Kithure Kindiki, however, says eight more areas in the counties of Baringo, Laikipia, and Samburu have been included in the notice. Timothy Kipnusu is on that story. On Sunday, Interior Cabinet Secretary Kithure Kindiki ordered residents to vacate some 27 areas marked for the second phase of the operation against bandits. However, the vacate notice has since been reviewed. 
Earlier, a section of leaders from Turkana County led by Deputy Governor Daniel Erus had raised concerns about the criteria used to come up with the marked areas. And the areas that appear broad in nature, like Lobokato Road, need to be re redefined, appropriate coordinates are identified, and those uh, hot spots are communicated appropriately. So I want to appeal to the government that uh, Kainuk uh, Lobokat by itself has uh, 13 schools. So when they are told to uh, vacate within 24 hours, I'm, I'm, I'm re like, uh, how will this happen? But Kindiki has now struck off areas of Kapelbok, Nakwamuru, Lobokat, the Takwen Escarpment, and Ombolion within Turkana and West Pokot counties from the list. In a statement to newsrooms, Ngelecha Hills and Gorges, Ramacha and Losokani Caves, Naromoru, Gorges, Karau Hills, Nosidan Escarpment, Rugus Caves and Amaya Gorges at the interface of Baringo, like Cape and Sapporo counties, are now in the review orders. At the same time, Kamunono, Lobokat, Kenya Wildlife Service, Amolem, Lotongot and Mogus Caves, as well as the entire Turkana National Game Reserve, are now included in the reviewed orders. Members of the park have been ordered to vacate the premises by 14th March. Meanwhile, residents of Burat Ward in Isiolo County are living in fear after two herders were shot dead in the Mulango area. Speaking during the burial of two other herders that were killed by bandits, the resident joined area leaders in calling on the government to conduct a similar security operation in the neighboring area of Oldoniro who are to combat bandits. Na kama ikitu jawai kufikia kwa waziri, imfikia siku ya leo. Inu watu wa Burat, sisi tunaumia. Na ngamia imeenda, na watoto mebaki yatima, mali imeenda, baba imeenda, watoto watenda api, na watoto kwa university, na wako secondaries, watasomesha na nini. Timothy Kipnosu, for Prime Edition. Let's shift gears and move into the space of politics as Emiola Umoja One Kenya coalition leader Raila Amolo Odinga maintains that they will resist and defy the Kenya Kwanzaa administration until their voices are heard. Speaking in Tuapa Kilifi County after holding an anti-government rally, Odinga said Azimio will, among other things, lead peaceful protests, sit-ins, as well as boycotts aimed at forcing the government to lower the cost of living. Here is that report. Raila Odinga says he will not be shaken by the threats by Interior Cabinet Secretary Kithure Kindiki over the coalition's call for mass action. The leaders say the work of the police is to protect Kenyans and their property and not to disrupt a constitutionally sound movement. The Azimio leaders also demanded that President William Ruto halt the recruitment of IABC commissioners saying the process should be revoked and the selection panel reconstituted with the representatives drawn from political parties. If the process is flawed in law, a flawed process cannot give you a valid outcome. Kwa hivyo mambo haya, mambo haya atukubali. Asitishe mambo ya recruitment ya IABC. Ahusishe wa shikana wote Kenya. Usipozima ufa, utajenga nini? Kume ya IABC ni lazima. Kila musika awekwe katika meza tuweze kubaliana. 
The leaders argued that they will use peaceful and constitutional means to drive a political and economic reform agenda whose objective is to pressure the government to lower the cost of living, reduce taxes and become more inclusive. Earlier, the Migori County government announced that there will be no mass action until the completion of the county economic forum. We're just requesting our people to hold on. We know Baba had called for a mass action. We'll do it peacefully. But for now, as you can see behind us, there is preparation for the 11th summit of the Lake region. So we are urging our people to remain calm. Well, from Azimio's push for reforms, let's look at an item here on pending bills. The Independent Electoral Commission Chief Executive Officer Hussein Marjan says IEBC is yet to settle over 4 billion shillings owed to suppliers who worked with the Commission ahead of the August general election. Appearing before the National Assembly's Public Accounts Committee, Majana was, however, tasked to explain the whereabouts of 125 biometric voter registration kits, which, by the way, allegedly went missing in Kisumu before the 2022 August poll. As everything everywhere all at once became the most successful film in terms of awards. You know, election is about integrity. Nothing else is how we perceive it. Does it concern you that 952 laptops containing data for election purposes are lost in one warehouse? What else is lost elsewhere? Between 31st of April and 21st of July, an equipment as important as this could get lost without the commission knowing when exactly it got lost. BVR is voter, vote biometric voter registration. So 125 of them are missing. I think Kenyans are intelligent, they will understand. These 125 uh, BVR kits were lost over time, not in one, they were lost over time. If you look at the investigation report, which basically addresses the 125, the time when they occurred, and those could be the last, last uh, um, um, information that we have provided as, as an extras, they were lost over time. And the investigation, in some cases, is uh, going on, and uh, in some cases, they are concluded. What is this uh, uh, conduit to get public funds through law firms? There is this issue of negotiation of this bending bills share. Now, I feel that it will be open to abuse. How do you negotiate? For example, when you give somebody already 60 million, what basis do you use to negotiate that again? I have written, I can demonstrate, I have written so many times national treasury for them to provide me with adequate funding this election this election that was done in 2022 we were not given mr chairman probably you should guide us as a commission when you're not given budget for uh, for 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 your for your activities should you then do it or not do it you have a mandate to deliver election on a specific date you have cases that are waiting for you should you leave them and you just proceed with your work like that IEBC Chair Hussein Marjan there responding to pertinent questions raised by Parliament. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we have much, much more coming up this week. Don't go away. Stay with us. Kila siku 
kwenye Mpesa chakuwa lipa na Mpesa hey bill number 757070 account number andika neno loto kisha weka star na nambari yako ya simu weka kiwango chochote cha pesa kuanzia shilingi hamsini hadi elfu mbili Aulali. lipa kisha subiri through welala nda kutimizia ndoto zako milioni mbili usiamini jube huu umeidhinishwa na BCLB And you know what this right here is <laughs> Grapevine baby pa, 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 pa. The event that brought together top designers from the fashion industry was a show for student designers from Delight Fashion School who had the platform to showcase their own designs. The music industry suffered yet another blow as Costa unfortunately passed on on Saturday 11th while on stage at the Ultra Music Festival in Johannesburg. After the dust settled on rigorous campaigns, Kenyans are waiting for elected leaders to deliver on their pledges. To have clean, accessible drinking water across the county. The hustle of everyday Kenyans is encouraged and rewarded. Operationalizing Kerogoya Level 5 Hospital. A functioning school feeding program. But how have the leaders performed so far? The percentage of days in 2021 were more than those ones in 2022. We will not politicize security because if we do so, we endanger the country. Every week, we bring you an honest assessment of the national and county governments. One of the best ways of accelerating national development is through collaboration with county governments. The Scorecard. Every Tuesday at 10 p.m. on KBC Channel 1. Welcome back to Prime Edition on Socials at KBC Channel 1, my Twitter handle at Tomboya. Now, a multi-agency security team and a section of residents of Kiambu County have come together in an initiative aimed at curbing the rising cases of crime within that area. Police in the affected areas have urged residents to volunteer information that will lead to the arrest of any criminal gangs that have been terrorizing residents there. Kiambu County Police Commander Paminas Muchangi Kioi says similar initiatives have been seen I've seen rather incidences of robbery contained in other parts of Kiambu, including Kabete, as well as Kikuyu. This weekend alone, police in Kabete and Kikuyu sub-county in a joint operation arrested three suspected gangsters who, according to the police, have been terrorizing residents in recent months. I would like to confirm that for a period of the last three weeks, we have been having spates of robberies within a number of estates, which includes Riondeli. Uh, we have another one, uh, Nairobi Ndogo, Ikambula, Kamangu, and Ondiri. Using an assorted cache of items such as homemade guns and blunt objects, the gangs have been robbing residents at their homes. In one incident, the officers managed to impound three motorcycles that were used by a gang, where one rider was burned to death by irate residents and with the others managing to escape. I would like to thank these officers for a work job well done and to tell them to keep it up 
they have done a very very good job and you know residents of all this estate they can sleep and enjoy their natural liberty because we have been having a lot of outcry within those areas also nabbed over the weekend was a consignment of cannabis sativa ethanol several boxes of alcohol and crude weapons before the initiative began residents say increased insecurity saw them close businesses as early as 7 p.m for fear of attacks <laughs> pitiza hiyo masaa ya jioni kuanzia saa moja kuelekea tunavamiwa na majambati sasa ninaweza shukuru nikisema afisa yetu wa polisi asante sana kwa kazi ambayo mmefanya police now say that they are working hand in hand with neighboring police commanders to ensure cases of robberies a sale of hard drugs and substance abuse is dealt with once and for all alana oko prime edition the Bomet County is set to benefit from a number of ventures from government of Malaysia. Speaking after hosting the High Commissioner of Malaysia in the county, uh, Ruzaimi bin Mohamud, and the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce, President Richard Ngatia, Bomet Governor Hilary Barichok, said that the assistance will include investment in agriculture, health, and also education, among other sectors that are aimed at economically uplifting the rural folk. Bomet County is now looking outwards in its ambitious investment plans. As such, Area Governor Hilary Barchok says he'll be meeting foreign investors keen in harvesting returns from the rich agricultural county. Barchok, who was the chief guest at the Malaysia-Kenya Business Forum, says it was time for counties to open doors to those who are willing to uplift livelihoods. To see a diverse group of investors poured from the public and private sectors whose expertise in large-scale investment is what makes today's forum so critical. Barchok said the assistance will not only create revenue for the county, but also create the much-needed employment opportunities in the devolved unit. And here we are today ready to explore potential investment opportunities between Kenya and Malaysia companies to strengthen diplomatic relationships between the two countries. Kenyan businessmen, they have seized this opportunity and they are looking for partnership. And I know Malaysian companies, as they look for opportunities here, they can partner with our uh, Kenyan companies for shared uh, prosperity. On his part, Malaysia High Commissioner to Kenya, Ruzaimi bin Mohammed, who was present, expressed his country's commitment to support Kenya's development agenda. Realize that Kenya has the potential and taken the step forward to explore and exploit any opportunities existing in this country. The trade delegation from Malaysia here today comprises of companies who are in the areas of education, agriculture, manufacturing, ICT, health, logistics and transportation, finance and banking. The Kenya National Chamber of Commerce President Richard Ngatia, who attended the forum, called upon counties to create business-friendly policies and streamline paperwork if they want to bring more investors. To uh, mitigate any problems and to advocate for businesses through the government, uh, through the National Assembly, so that they can be able to formulate uh, policies uh, that will be able to be conducive for environment. <laughs> Government is seeking to strengthen private sector partnership, private-public partnership rather, in the water sector to improve efficiency. Water, Sanitary and Irrigation Cabinet Secretary Ali Wahome says that huge funding gap in the water sector can only be bridged through a joint venture. Here's that report. The United States says it will invest more than 13 billion shillings for development of clean water and sanitation facilities in the next five years. U.S. Ambassador to Kenya Meg Whitman says part of the investments will also go towards mitigating the current water shortage that has been caused by the current drought that has affected some parts of the country. USAID is ensuring that our country partners have the infrastructure and flexibility to prepare for future shocks by deepening our partnerships with local and national governments, the private sector, and civil society. Water Sanitation and Irrigation Cabinet Secretary Alice Sohome says the country is seeking more investments in the water sector through public-private partnership engagements to raise revenue for water facilities across the country. We also need to create the right incentives to attract private investors into this area. 
This is a must. Water sector recycling, water storage and conservation solutions are needed like today. And therefore, that approach will give us the government says it is working with private water service providers to reduce water wastage in the country. There is estimated at 27 billion shillings annually. Sustainable water resource management, provision of water and sanitation services, and strengthening governance in the sector, and finally sustainable sector financing. Investments in water provision is earmarked to increase food production, promote school attendance, and reduce waterborne diseases. We're on to an item here that uh, touches on psychosocial support. Government of Kenya will establish counseling and wellness desks at all Uduma centers. Public Service Principal Secretary Amos Gathecha says that the docket will be manned by professional counselors, who, by the way, will be offering those services for free to public servants and any other member of the public. The State Department for Public Service has put in place an elaborate plan to address the mental health challenges in public service. The Principal Secretary for Public Service, Amos Gadesha, was speaking during a familiarization tour of the Uduma Center at GPO on the ongoing government digitization agenda, noted that the Public Service Counseling Helpline is aimed at easing access to mental health services and facilitating efficient provision of health services while maintaining confidentiality, accessibility, and professionalism. And once those services are, are, are digitized, then we'll, uh, they will, of course, be offered through the Huduma centers, and therefore the Huduma centers will become even more busy because uh, they will be handling all those services. He added that the rollout of the services will be done in phases and in complementing the service, the Uduma Contact Center will offer telecounseling service 24-7 in order to reach as many people as possible. We are increasing the number to 5,000. Okay? Now, we cannot have 5,000 desks in a center, isn't it? So what we are going to do is to train these staff so that they can be able to handle, uh, say, 10 services, 15 services in one desk. Opicho Chemtai for Prime Edition. Good move. We take our second break right here on Prime Edition. Coming up, we will be looking at today's business. Uh, Why Rimo and Jenga is on standby on the other side. Plus, we'll get sporty with Karen Maraquet. Keep it. Stay with us. Uroje squeeze wateja wanatulipa na simu sana sana. Hiyo si shida, hiyo ni poa sana by the way. Lakini saa shida inatokea, wengine wetu wanachukua hizo namba za wateja, alafu wanaanza kugawana gawana huku nje kama njugu. Bana, ina tuaribia kazi. Eh. In this digital era, it's normal to collect information for your client, but if you're collecting information for the client, it's important that you secure it and use it for the intended purpose. Ujumbe huu umeletwa kwako na ofisi ya Data Protection Commissioner. Nini? Nimesahau kucheza Loto Moto. Usisahau kucheza Loto Moto. Shinda milioni mbili kila siku kwenye Mpesa. Chakua lipa na Mpesa. Table number 757070. Account number andika neno Loto. Kisha weka star na nambari yako ya simu. Weka kiwango chuchote ja pesa kuansia shilingi hamsimi hadi elfu mbili. Aulali. Lipa. Kisha subiri dro. Welala. Nda kutimizia Loto zako. Milioni mbili uziamini. Jube huu umidimishwa na BCLB. You're watching KBC Prime Edition. Welcome back. Now, the Parliamentary Committee on Information and Innovation has called on government to channel more resources to information and communication technology, terming the department as key in youth employment. The lawmakers pledged to push for the rollout of a youth empowerment program that will advocate for the use of ICT in creation of job opportunities. 
A section of lawmakers has backed Ajira Digital to be the guiding light in the delivery of empowering programs tailor-made for Kenya's young generation. The practicality of some of the initiatives the government has been able to do in having the Ajira centers where we have gone to Kuresoi South and we have seen for ourselves that that program is truly making an impact the legislators were speaking in Kericho County, where they urged the government to channel more financial resources towards information and technology to make the sector more attractive to the youth. <laughs> Meanwhile, Prime Cabinet Secretary Musalia Mudavadi has stressed the need to foster unity in the country. Musalia, who paid a courtesy call to the former Vice President Moody Awori, said the realization of Kenya's aspirations will rely heavily on cohesion. And I'm so delighted that uh, uh, I've, I've gained a lot of insight from his uh, perspective on uh, what we should do and what we should focus on as a country. Elsewhere, the government has announced the measures to reduce high import bill on food commodities, which currently stands at 201 billion shillings per year. So other than increasing the production, we are focusing on value addition, looking at how else do we Let's move. Let's look at our strategies on how we can uh, change this. How do we work together? How do we organize production? so that we easily organize the market. For Jeff, justice for Jeff, justice for Jeff. Yeah. In Nakuru County, hundreds of residents staged demonstrations within the city to protest against the unclear death of Geoffrey Mwathi. The residents urged the police to expedite investigations into the incident. This is number DCI. Tunaomba serikali yetu ya Kenya yule ambaye alifanya hicho kitendo akamatwe sisi tunataka haki itendeke. Finally, communities living in Teso North have benefited from free tuberculosis screening courtesy of USAID and KCCB Commercial TB program. Speaking in Malaba, the program officer Hazel Oyungu said they are working with the county government and had dispatched clinicians to villages to trace contacts with a view of screening and referring them to hospital. We do not implement independently, we work closely with the county uh, government of health, specifically so the Ministry of Health. Uh, our focus as a program is to implement the TB control activities and support these activities in faith-based facilities and private facilities. Reporting for Prime Edition, I am Teresa Mutai. Kamwidi Munye is remembered as one of the nationalists involved in the struggle of Kenyan's independence in the 50s. This week on the cabinets, we focus on the 26-year-old political history of Munye that cut across the regimes of President Jomo Kenyatta all the way to President Daniel Toroiti Charap Moy. Kamuithi Munyi studied political science and diplomacy at the American University in Cairo, Egypt. While as a student, he propagated the ideals of Kenya's freedom struggle. Munyi was certainly cut out for a career in politics. He had been involved in the building of Kanu right from its formative years in 1960 until 1976 when he lost the party branch chairmanship. On return to Kenya in 1962, Munyi did not seek employment but decided instead to enter active politics. He became an active member of KANU, which had been formed two years earlier and was elected chairman of the Embu branch, a position he held until 1976. Before contesting the Embu East parliamentary seat in 1969, Munyi had represented Embu district in the Senate, having been elected during the independence election in 1963. The Senate was to be abolished in 1966 and merged to be the lower house. In 1969, 
Mwenye was elected and opposed to represent Embo East constituency and proceeded to retain the seat in the two successive elections but narrowly lost to Sylvester Mate. Kamuithi Mwenye made history in 1988 elections by registering the highest number of votes for any member of parliament. He garnered 29,000 696 votes in the parliamentary elections against his sole rivals 13,016. In the first years of Moi's presidency, Muni was able to influence a number of development projects in his constituency through the government development programs spearheaded by the district development committees introduced by the Moi administration soon after Moi assumed presidential power, including the construction of Erira Bridge in Bereno. The bridge connects Evrori and Tower divisions, greatly benefiting the people of Embo. Another project was development of the Katumani maize variety for the dairy lands of Mbere area, piloted by the Kenya Agricultural Research Institute, now renamed Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization. When he served as assistant minister, he used his influence to secure employment for several high school and university graduates in his constituency. During his last days in active politics, he became a Kanu headliner. He was appointed Minister for Cooperatives and Development following his nomination to Parliament after the 1992 general election. Jack Uambiru, the Cabinet. Welcome back. It's now time for Serious Business. Wairimo Njenga is on set. Yes. Wairimo, we are buying on credit for the first time. Yes, fuel. so we'll be importing fuel through a government-to-government -government, uh, tendering system starting uh, next month. I'll be giving you details of that and much more, as well as 4 million bags of maize that are expected to get into the country in the next two weeks. That and more. Now let's kick it off. Kenya will start importing fuel through a government-to-government -government standard system that will see the country buy petroleum products on credit for a period of six months. Energy and Petroleum Cabinet Secretary Davis Churchill says the deal will see fuel marketing companies buy petroleum products in Kenyan shillings through a credit system to ease pressure on the local currency. He says the deal signed between Kenya and Saudi Arabia as well as Dubai uh, fuel farms will ensure fuel retails at lower prices. We went in, into negotiation with different governments who participated and we have closed and signed the deal with Aramco of Saudi for a supply of two products, two AGO cargos every month uh, for a period of six months. So we have a contract for 270 days and we did close a deal for supply of PMS which is super with Enoch. Enoch is a Dubai based company for three cargos every month for the next six months uh, contract and we've signed those contracts uh, as of Friday. The product will henceforth be paid on Kenya shilling, will not be paying on the US dollar which basically will relieve the pressure on the dollar to ensure that those dollars are available for the rest of the industry in manufacturing, uh, in the food security where we are today, and uh, in the various other sectors of the economy, which needs, um, which where we operate on export or uh, import market rather, to ensure that the economy is performing, not because petroleum is sucking every month $500 million, uh, but that, that amount will now be available to ensure that the rest of the economy uh, is not staffed of these dollars. Now, the first consignment of the 4 million bags of duty-free maize is expected to land in Kenya in the next two weeks. 
Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Mithika Linturi says the country will also receive additional maize imports from Tanzania and Uganda starting next month as it seeks to reduce the price of maize flour in the country. The government plans to import maize from Tanzania and Uganda to stabilize maize prices in the short term. Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Mithika Linturi says they have reached an agreement with the two countries over import specification and the commodity is expected in the country early next month. So, uh, Tanzania and the minister uh, from Uganda, my colleague who we are with in this meeting, and he's telling me in another one month you'll be able to get, be able to get some uh, good mess for us to take from Uganda. The imports are expected to supplement the first batch of the 4 million bags of duty-free maize from outside the Comesa region that are expected in the Kenyan market in the next two weeks. Have we imported, I've given the permits to duty-free to bring in the maize. Right. I have given people permits to bring rice into the country. And these ones are supposed to be here in the next 14 days. As a long-term measure to lower the cost of maize flag products, Kenya will next month sign contracts with local farmers in Zambia to grow maize exclusively for the Kenyan market. Because the cost of production in Uganda, in, in Zambia, is quite low. And I'm getting $300, uh, $300 per ton. Kenya is also seeking to sign an agreement with the Tanzania-Zambia Railway Authority to facilitate transportation of the Zambian maize into Kenya. So what I only need to do is negotiate with Zazara Ridley or anybody else to ship the mess in Kenya. And the worst case scenario, probably even if it was the transport was to Mbindabu, we won't get to eight. So, so if we are to get the mess here, a kilo, at eight, then we are good to go. He was speaking during the 42nd Desert Locus Control Committee, where regional countries called for increased investments in containing locusts and other invasive pets at their breeding grounds. The pest gain his ability to move in a swarm from the breeding area. So that we are able to deal with that problem at that stage. Benson Ruba reporting for Prime Edition. The Ministry of Youth Affairs, the Arts and Sports says all future sporting events will designate spaces for innovators and traders to exhibit their products. The initiative is part of a wider plan by the government to promote locally made products while also empowering innovators. The government has rolled out initiatives aimed at supporting local innovators to secure markets for their products. The Ministry of Youth Affairs, the Arts and Sports says as part of actualizing the government's Pesam Fukoni agenda, bazaars will henceforth be set aside at sporting events for local innovators, artists and service providers to showcase and sell their products. This bazaar has been able to showcase our creatives in art, in music, in fashion and expose them to the world and to customers that they would never ever before would have been exposed to. Across from the back nine of the Mudaiga Golf Club, just where they normally have their driving range, is what is known as the Hustlers Bazaar. This is an initiative of the Ministry of Youth Affairs, the Arts and Sports. Let's take a walk as we see what the traders have right here at the Hustlers Bazaar. Uh, the Hustler Bazaar has given me a, a platform where uh, I can uh, sell my art uh, to different people, people I've never met before. It's uh, like a market for the young people uh, to promote themselves in the market. The responses has been good and also we are meeting clients from different, you know, people we've never met before. And also we've noticed one thing we've been told is uh, just texts, you know, like there's very serious clients. So it's for young entrepreneurs. You see, when you get this opportunity where you don't have to pay to exhibit, it's really something that is empowering our business. I'm sure in the next, in the next coming years, in the, from today, Kenya, Kenya creatives and talents and sports will be on another level. For Prime Edition, I am Daniel Wahome.
Now, global multi-asset broker Exness has officially launched in Kenya, targeting to leverage on the tech-savvy Kenyans to grow electronic trading opportunities. The firm hopes to leverage Kenya's strategic positioning as a launchpad to other African countries. Here is Frederick Mwoki with the details. Forex trading has been gaining popularity for traders and investors keen on exploiting the risk to grow wealth by taking advantage of currency fluctuations and market volatility. Countries with deep internet penetration such as Kenya have been a target for such companies. The latest entrant into the Kenyan market is Exynos, which has operations in Uruguay, the United Kingdom and Cyprus, as well as three other African countries, namely South Africa, Mauritius and Seychelles. Why Kenya? We inquired. He sees the conducive regulatory environment coupled with the high internet penetration, mostly assessed via mobile devices, makes Kenya ideal for such investments. Kenya is a very important country for us, um, not only in the East African con uh, context, but throughout the whole of Africa. My role at Exynos is you know, to look after Sub-Saharan Africa as a whole, um, and Kenya is a very important country for me as well. We've got a very um, young, dynamic population here, very well educated, and you know, there's demand for our products and services here. People want to participate in these financial markets. The European-based retail broker has in recent months been expanding aggressively in emerging markets such as Asia, Africa and Latin America. And then you need right information, right knowledge and the right processes. So, you know, the more you, you get ahead started earlier, the better you save your time, you know. Quite an experience that has been nice. Um, one secret that I could tell you about Forex is that consistency comes with blowing a lot of accounts. It comes with doing one thing over and over again until you get it right. Frederick Mwoki for Prime Edition. William Bruto has assumed the leadership of the Kenya Port Authority, promising to turn around the performance of the country's ports. Top on the agenda will be to ensure port operations are reverted to Mombasa from the Naivasha Inland Container Terminal and complete the ongoing expansion of Mombasa Port and the completion of Bads 3 at the port of Lamu. <laughs> After almost four years without a substantive managing director, Transport Cabinet Secretary Kiptumba Morkomen appointed Captain William Ruto as the 15th managing director of the Kenya Port Authority on Friday last week. Ruto, who was in charge of the Kisumu port, has been in the port business for more than 30 years. Today, the new managing director took over office, promising to improve the fortunes of the Kenyan ports. Me, me, my rally performance <laughs> Top on the agenda is operationalization of the second container terminal at the port of Mombasa, which was constructed at a cost of 32 billion shillings. Since it was completed in 2020, the new terminal has been dodged by disagreements over its management. The terminal has increased the port's capacity by 450,000 20-foot equivalent units to the current 2.1 million TEUs, giving the port of Mombasa an upper hand over other regional facilities like the port of Djibouti and the Dar es Salaam ports. While addressing members of the staff at the KPA headquarters in Mombasa, Captain Ruto said he will work with all players to grow the facility into an African logistical hub and a world-class port. <laughs> Kuwa, 
performance lazima iende juu. Amenini kuanzia leo we have to plan how we start breaking records. Kama lazima pia naye tuonyeshe wakubwa wetu wale wako na rodi kuwa sisi from Mombasa County, I am Anburu. Now, businesses have been urged to use innovative models to overcome accessibility challenges to serve rural communities. A 5 billion shillings program by the Mastercard Foundation Fund for Rural Prosperity rather, that has been implemented over the past eight years supported a portfolio of 38 private sector businesses uh, to increase financial inclusion through innovative products and services. Through the fund, participant businesses mm. developed over 171 new financial products and services surpassing an initial target of 119 by 43%. Their solutions ranged from providing loans and insurance, affordable financing options on agricultural imports, using IT-based solutions to improve credit risk soaring, in the process, nearly 5,000 jobs were created, with at least 38% of them created by women. MasterCard Foundation Fund for Rural Prosperity Engagement Partner at KPMG East Africa, Smita Sangraja, said the fund set out to support 1 million people but ended up reaching over 5 million people. By using these financial products and services, it is expected to improve and transform the lives of people living in rural and agricultural areas. Now that's your remarks at the end of business news for tonight. Karen Kibet is on standby with the sports update. My name is Oida Mujeka. I was part of the team in Ilitumwe could take out Bruhan. Move in! In account for five years, we can study the man. All I ask is you let me write my wrongs and give me an opportunity to bring Bruhan down for good. Senior Sergeant Farah, a.k.a. Stingray. Opro Ibrahim, a.k.a. Mongoose. Opro Katana, a.k.a. Panther. PC Kibet, a.k.a. University. One, two, three. Woo! One, two, three. We do this for honor. Yeah. Our loved ones, our family, and our country. One, two, three. <laughs> And you know what this right here is? Grapevine, baby. <laughs> event that brought together top designers from the fashion industry was a show for student designers from Delight Fashion School who had the platform to showcase their own designs. Good. So, the music industry suffered yet another blow as Costa unfortunately passed on on Saturday 11th while on stage at the Ultra Music Festival in Johannesburg. Welcome back. It's a brand new week. Let's now talk sports. My name is Karen Kibet. 
The national under-21 women's hockey team lost their second match at the ongoing Africa Hockey Junior Cup after being beaten 5-0 by South Africa in Ismailia, Egypt. The successive lo losses have knocked the Kenyan team out of contention for a place in the Hockey Junior World Cup scheduled for Chile in December. South Africa is currently leading with six points after beating Zimbabwe in their opener. The Kenyan Queens will face Zimbabwe in their last fixture tomorrow. The top two teams will qualify for the finals to be played this Thursday and the last two teams will battle it out for the third place position. Winners of the competition that uh, has brought together four teams including Kenya, South Africa, Zimbabwe and host Egypt will advance to the 2023 FIH Junior Hockey World Cup in December. Moving on to matches rally, FIA junior WRC star Hamza Anwar will return to action this weekend for the ARC Equator Rally in Voy for the first time since competing in WRC Rally Sweden. He'll be back in Voy three months after retiring in the 2022 KNRC season closing Guru Nanak Rally in his Mitsubishi Evolution 10 under the watchful eye of his dad Asar Anwar. Reigning ARC junior champion Hamza Anwar will return to the bucket seat of an M Sport Poland prepared Ford Fiesta Rally 3 car alongside Kenya National Rally Championship leader Jeremiah Wahome and last year's ARC 3 champion Mark Rekimathi at this weekend's ARC Equator Rally in Voi. Also in the Voi mix is the reigning ARC 4 champion Rio Smith, who has entered a Ford Fiesta Rally 4, the only one of its kind on Kenyan soil. <laughs> Jeremiah hopes to replicate his KNRC1 Machakos rally form, where he registered his career first victory in the Rally 3 Fiesta. Hamza is currently enjoying the lengthy two-month junior WRC break, after which he will embark on the WRC Rally Croatia on the weekend of 20 to 23rd of April. <laughs> He will also race in the third round of Junior WRC, the Rally Italia Sardinia, on the 1st to 4th of June, WRC Rally Estonia on 20th to 23rd of July, before wrapping up his sixth rally campaign with WRC Eco Acropolis Rally Greece from 7th to 10th of September. <laughs> Macre is expected to strategize accordingly with his navigator Mwangi Kioni for a good result after finishing second overall in the season opening Machakos Rally. The first round of the Continental Series, the Rally Bandama of Ivory Coast, took place in February minus the Kenyan cruise. Other drivers expected in Voy this weekend is last year's ARC runner-up Karan Patel in a Ford Fiesta Rally 3 and Baldev Chaga in a Subaru N12. Stages for the event will be centered on the expansive tighter Sisol estate in Matate with a two-day total transport distance of 421.08 kilometers and a competitive mileage of approximately 205.25 kilometers. The event will feature two legs with a total of 10 competitive stages. Thank you, Buckley, for that detailed report. Moving on, Brazilian winger Rafinha scored the only goal as Barcelona narrowly beat Atletico Bilbao 1-0 to increase their lead at the top of the La Liga table to nine points. Meanwhile, Juventus beat Sampdoria 4-2 in the Italia Serie A. Top of La Liga to nine points above of Real Madrid after they beat Athletic Bilbao 1-0. In France, <laughs> all the sports stories we had for you tonight. I'm now joined by my colleagues, Mr. Tom Boyer and Wairimo. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, eh? You're Listen. behind the scenes. You're behind the scenes. Listen, eh? <laughs> Seven big ones. 
Have people recovered? No, oh my god. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you why I've asked. Still healing. I'll, I'll tell you why I've asked. Eh? <laughs> Who would? You know, you know the, he's talking about Manchester United. Yeah, the, 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 seven, 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 zero seven two two. <laughs> now, the reason I'm asking you that eh, is because the government has set up counseling and wellness center desks at Uduma centers. <laughs> <laughs> we need is to go for be therapy be there yeah. because it's free. Yeah, it's so, it's also free, by the way. You think it's a good move? Manchester United fans, <laughs> let's all head to any Kuduma Centre in Kenya so in that Kenya. we get free counselling yeah. and know how to get over the seven mm. yeah. meals. I need to say, just the stress levels that you guys eh, have been having. I know. Yeah. And anxiety. <laughs> yes. And all those things. But on a serious note, productivity, you know, on a serious right? note, do you think it's timely for government to go that direction where now they're telling the country you know what mm -hmm. they are they are they are they are they are they are debunking myths and the stigmas around mental health issues and sending mm -hmm. a strong message mm -hmm. that kujeni if you have any psychosocial issue we have presence in all the uduma centers is it a good move because you know people are people people are stressed yeah you? people are depressed out there and yeah. i think that's the way to go yeah it yeah. should be set up actually in every organization yeah yeah to ensure that you know department. you take care of your employees yeah, yeah? from because people have stress home stress yeah true. stress at home and uh, they also have uh, b businesses that are stressing them so yeah. i think that's the way to go for each and every organization out there mm -hmm. yeah even here at kbc yeah. we should have we should set up one Oh yes, mm. and you know counselling is very expensive. So yeah. if you don't have yeah. an insurance cover, you don't yeah. have the money, mm. you have to suffer with your own stress. Yeah, but yeah. at least uh, now that there are free services in any Huduma Centre in the country, if you have an issue, yeah. just walk into there and get uh, all the help you need. You don't need money right now. Ah, okay. Yeah. True. All right, that's good. And overall, I think we'll agree that it promotes uh, wellness. Oh yes. And uh, good mental health. Oh mm -hmm. yes. Yes. All right, so we have to bring it to an end. Remember, tomorrow we are also back here on Prime Edition at 9, so we encourage you to join us then. Uh, on behalf of the people in the back end, you know you don't get to see them. <laughs> Mika and the rest of the team. Yes. And our sign language interpreter, I want to see her smile before I mention yes, her name. Yes, yes, yes. There she is. There she's smiling. <laughs> Susan Fisker. The wonderful thank Susan Fisker. So I want to thank you for watching. My name is Tombo and I'm wishing you a pleasant viewing. Good night. Good, Good night. night.